Hi guys. So we are back with another video on five MCQs on securities market. So this is the series which we are running for past few days and this is very much important for the SEBI grade A 2018 examination. Now the topic for this video today is going to be mixed MCQs based on general securities market. So friends, we have been working in this direction of guiding students for competitive examinations for the past few years and we have been blessed with some of the very amazing results. In RBA grade B 2017, 27 of our students, they made it to the final list. And in NABAD grade A 2018, 20 of our students, they were selected in the final list. And RBA grade AB 2018, the final result is still awaited but again we are positive on this front also. Now before directly jumping onto the questions, let me quickly tell you about the courses which we are presently running for SEBI grade A 2018. So we are offering these courses, you can avail the course for security market phase 1 and phase 2 or you can also choose the phase 1 mock test along with this securities market course and there is this full course for phase 1 and phase 2 of the SEBI grade A. So you can choose as per your requirement and also you can avail attractive discounts by using the codes given below. Now in order to channelize your preparation in a better way and in order to prepare you for all the related competitive examinations in one go, we are also providing some combo courses for SEBI, RBI and NABAD. So you can choose the combo courses also if you are preparing for all these examinations. Again you can avail discounts by using the discount codes mentioned here. So guys let's start with the first question, dash regulations requires promoters of a company to disclose details of their encumbered shares including known disposal undertakings by promoters which are covered under the scope of disclosures of encumbrances. The options which are given they are SEBI listing obligations and disclosure requirements regulations 2015, SEBI substantial acquisition of shares and takeovers regulations 2011, SEBI Prohibition of Insider Trading Regulations 2015, SEBI Alternative Investment Fund Regulations 2012 or none of the above. Now friends before answering this question we must be aware of this concept which is non-disposal undertakings. So as its name suggests this refers to those undertakings those kind of shares which cannot be disposed. So they are typically undertakings which are given by a shareholder. So a shareholder is giving an undertaking that these shares they are not to be transferred or otherwise alienated. So these are the securities which must remain with the shareholder in all the cases and they are in the nature of a negative lien given in favor of another party usually a lender. So simply if I try to explain this one. So if a shareholder, so there is a person who is this shareholder and this shareholder this has taken a loan from another person and this shareholder has, has promised that I will keep my shares as a security for my loan which I have taken. So since these shares they are kept as security so these shares should not be transferred because if they are transferred then they will lose their importance as a security and this will give loss to the person who has given the money as a loan. So that's why these kind of NDUs they are give, they are in the market and giving these kinds of undertakings they are going to prevent the shareholder to transfer or alienate the securities. So this is the concept of non-disposal undertakings. So when you cannot sell the shares, you cannot transfer the shares due to any case you give this non-disposal undertakings. Now if we relate this concept to the given problem then the regulations which are relevant here they are SEBI substantial acquisition of shares and takeover regulations 2011. So these regulations they require the promoters of a company to disclose the details of their encumbered shares. Now we, when we talk about encumbered we mean having some burden having some uh, having some additional responsibility. So they have to disclose the details of their encumbered shares. So shares they have uh, kept as security shares which have any obligation attached to them. They are encumbered shares including NDUs 
by the promoters which are covered under the scope of disclosure of encumbrances. So as per these regulations, the promoter of the company, they have to disclose the details of their encumbrances, which would also cover these uh, kind of NDUs, that is non-disposal undertakings. Now recently this concept was in use because SEBI had directed the depositories to develop a separate module in their system so that they can record the non-disposal undertaking. So depositories they have the record of all the shares so there must be a, a separate module which would contain the detail of those shares which are under some kind of encumbrance or lien so that we can make sure that these are the shares which cannot be sold freely. So now friends, we can easily answer this question that as per SEBI substantial acquisition of shares and takeover regulations, promoters, they have to disclose the details of their encumbrances. So the correct answer to this problem is going to be option number B. Now let's move to the next question. The traders are allowed to enter the block deal orders only during the block deal window. So if there is a separate set of category of orders, which is block deal orders, if they have to be entered, then they can only be entered during a block deal window. Now this block deal window is available to traders. They include morning, afternoon and evening block deal window, morning and afternoon block deal window, afternoon and evening block deal window morning and evening block deal window or none of the above. So friends, in order to answer this question, we must be aware of this block deal window mechanism. So this block deal, the name itself suggests that this is not a normal deal. This is not a kind of deal which retail investors or small investors would enter into. This deal would involve a sale of lots of shares. Now, a separate window is provided by the exchange for executing such block deals. Now what are block deals? Block deals are the trades where the value which is involved, very important, the value which is involved is greater than or equal to rupees 10 crores. So if the value which is involved in the trade is equal to or more than 10 crores, then this becomes a block deal. And this has to be executed through a separate window which is provided for this large deal that is the block deal window. Now SEBI in 2005 had prescribed the guidelines for execution of such block deals. Now the block deal windows which are available, they shall be available on all trading days in the equity segment and the traders they are allowed to enter the block deal orders only during the block deal window as given below. So there is a separate set of time which is provided for those investors who have to enter into those block deals which involve value greater than or equal to rupees 10 crores. So these separate set of windows they are morning, morning block deal window and afternoon block deal window. For example, there are two foreign institutional investors and they want to trade 10% of a company's total number of shares and the value of this is going to run into crores. So this transaction is a block deal transaction and since it involves trading of a large quantity of shares, so there must be a separate kind of mechanism which would be there in place for this large amount of transaction because this transaction can ultimately impact the entire market because the volume of securities, the value of shares involved is very high. So considering the risk factors which are attached to these kind of transactions, the exchanges, they have allocated a separate trading window for these kinds of transactions. So now we can easily answer this question that the windows which are available for block deal, they are morning block deal window and afternoon block deal window. So the answer is going to be option number B. Now let's move to the next question. Who among the following is entitled to incentives under liquidity enhancement scheme in the context of securities market? So options which are there, they are 
ब्लू चिप लिस्टेड कंपनीज स्टॉक ब्रोकर्स एंड मार्केट इंटरमीडियरीज रिटेल इन्वेस्टर्स ऑल ऑफ दी बफ और नन ऑफ दी अब सो द कोर कॉन्सेप्ट विच इज बींग टस्ट इन दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑफ लिक्विडिटी एनहांसमेंट स्कीम Now, if we learn about this liquidity enhancement scheme, under this scheme, brokers and other market intermediaries, they are the ones who are getting some specific incentives for a specified period of time. Now, why would you be giving the specified incentives to the market intermediaries like the brokers? Because we have to bring in liquidity in the market and generate the investor interest in securities which have limited trading activity. so this is kind of an incentive available for the brokers so that they can market those securities which are having a limited trading activity so as per this scheme the stock exchanges they can introduce the incentive schemes for brokers and intermediaries so that the liquidity or the trading can be enhanced in ill liquid securities so securities which are not being traded frequently so that in those securities the trade is promoted this kind of scheme is available now sebi during march 2018 permitted liquidity enhancement scheme in commodity derivative contracts subject to certain requirements so that's why this scheme was in news recently because sebi has permitted liquidity enhancement scheme for being employed in commodity derivative contracts also however there is a rider attached to this one that is any commodity which is classified as a sensitive commodity so if the commodity is sensitive commodity as per the proper definitions which are provided for this kind of commodity then this is not eligible for liquidity enhancement scheme so we do not want to promote liquidity in the sensitive commodities so that's why we have excluded the sensitive commodities from the purview of liquidity enhancement scheme so now we can easily answer this question that the incentives which are available under the liquidity enhancement scheme they are available for stock brokers and market intermediaries so the correct answer is going to be option number b now let's move to the next question isin code is a dash code that serves for uniform identification of a security so this question is regarding an international securities code which is popularly referred to as isin code so the options which are given they are 12 character alpha numeric 12 character numeric 10 character alpha numeric 10 character numeric or none of the above so we have to tell what kind of code is this isn code and what are the number of digits which are there in this particular code now this international securities identification number or isn this is the concept which is involved in this particular question now this international securities identification number or isin code is a unique code that is used to identify specific securities so this is going to be a unique code so this has its own uniqueness and this code will be available for a, a unique security So this code has been designed so that the securities can be easily identified by just using this particular code. Now the National Lumbering Agency. So this is the agency which is a separate agency for each country. This allocates these international security identification numbers for the securities which are issued in the country. Now when we talk about the format of this international securities identification number then this contains 12 characters. so there are 12 characters so this is very important the number of characters which are involved here they are 12 characters now within this 12 characters they are divided into different sets like the country code security specific code and checking number so overall the code is made up of both letters and the numbers so this would be an alpha numeric code so as here you can see that country code here is for india is in then there is a specific security code and then there is also a check number which is placed at the end so these make up the 12 digits so it comprises both letters and alphabets 
So now we can easily answer this question that ISIN code is a 12 character alphanumeric code. So answer is going to be option number A. Now let's move to the next question. In the secondary market, the highest share in terms of traded turnover is held by. Options are equity, equity derivatives segment, currency derivatives segment, equity cash segment, commodity derivatives segment or none of the above. So in nutshell, this question is asking in which of these segments the turnover, the amount which is traded is the highest. Now if you talk about the turnover in securities market in terms of the value of the uh, contracts which are entered into, then the highest share in terms of traded turnover it is held by equity derivatives so equity derivatives they have having a share of 86.3 percent so this is a very huge share so most of the traded turnover is blocked by this equity derivatives segment then comes the currency derivatives segment and then is the equity cash segment commodity derivatives segment corporate bonds and interest rate derivatives so these are the different types of uh, segments which are there in the securities market and the turnover of each of these segments. So the highest turnover is of equity derivatives segment. So this is something which you have to remember because one may have this notion that equity cash segment this is having the largest share but this is not true. The highest share is of equity derivatives. So now we can easily answer this question that in the secondary market the highest share in terms of traded turnover is held by the answer is option number A equity derivatives segment. So friends this was all about our discussion on some of the very important MCQs pertaining to the securities market and if you have any query or you wish to know more about our courses you can visit our website which is www.edutap.co.in or you can drop us a mail at hello at edutap.co.in or you can call us at 8146207241. So friends, if you found this video useful, please like the same, share it with your friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you wish to get regular updates on Telegram, you can subscribe to our Telegram channel, the link of which is given here as well as in the description to this particular video. And subscribing to our Telegram channel is also going to help you fetch the PDFs of all the discussions which we are doing on YouTube. So thank you friends.